Hey guys, <clears throat> I just wanted to make a, uh, it may not be a quick video, but I wanted to make a video to kind of go over the vector stuff that we covered in class last time and then kind of introduce projectile motion and how these two things are related. And so just to review real quick, um, you know, here I have uh, vector A, which is at some angle theta. And what we want to be able to do is decompose this. And to decompose means we want to find the pieces that are in the x and y direction. So we want to get an x and a y out of this thing. And so we can just use trig in order to do this. Um, so this a, if my x and y is you know up and down, left and right, then what we can draw, we can just draw in these right angle vectors. And this would be a in the x direction, a in the y direction. And then using some trig, we can pull out uh, the values for this. So if I do, um, let's do a, AX. So AX is related to this A through cosine. And so we would have, you know, cosine of theta is equal to AX over A. And that's the magnitude of the vector. <clears throat> Likewise, AY is related through sine. So we get sine theta in this case is going to be AY over a and so now we just solve each of these for the components these are these are called components over here um, look at that so those are components vector components and that's what we want to pull out so we're decomposing we're getting the components of the vector so if we solve this what we end up getting is a x in this case is going to be the magnitude of the vector times cosine Theta. And over here, when we solve for ay, we would get ay is equal to a times sine theta. Okay, so these are the two components. Um, so you could actually get you could get values for these. Sorry, I accidentally touched it with my fingers. Um, you know, if if well, let me get a calculator so I can give you some actual values, give you an example. So if I knew that I had a, a vector, say a, a displacement vector of, I don't know, 15 meters at um, 30 degrees. Well, based on that, then I can determine, you know, what was my displacement in the x direction and what was my displacement in the y direction using these components. So using this derivation, um, my displacement in the x direction would be, uh, so I'm going to call it, I don't know, my delta x, or no, because that might get confusing for you. So let's just call this a, or we'll call it d for displacement. So my d in the x direction is going to be d cosine theta, which in this case would be 15 cosine uh, 30. So it's just the magnitude, this, how long, times cosine of the angle 30. If we do that, we get uh, 15 times cosine 30, 12.99, 99 meters. Likewise, we can do a dy, so that would be d sine theta. Be careful, though, the cosine and sine depends on where the angle is. Anyway, that would be 15 sine 30. Oops. Sine 30. And so we get 15 times sine 30, which is 7.5 meters. So in order to have a total displacement of 15 meters, I could go 12.99 uh, meters, you know, this direction, and then I would go up 7.5 meters. Notice if I add these up, it's not equal to that, but we should saw it should uh, follow the Pythagorean. I'm just going to check it. I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to estimate 13 squared plus 7.5 squared, and I'm going to see if that's equal to 15 squared. So is that equal? So 13 squared plus 7.5 squared is 225.25 equal to 15 squared, which is 225. 225. So yes, I would say, I know there's a 0.25, but I rounded that, and 
cosine, there's some other rounding that's going on. So anyway, uh, this is the basic thing. This is it's this decomposition that we want to be able to do, and that's pulling out components of vectors using some trig, and then we can do stuff with it. Okay, so what I really wanted to do was um, now tie this back because we we want to deal with the vectors. Displacement is kind of boring. Um, what we want to be able to work with is velocity and acceleration and then eventually force. So suppose I had a, an object which was given an initial velocity, let's say, I don't know, 13 meters per second at an angle of, uh, I don't know, 20 degrees. Okay. So how do we deal with this? So this object, this is a projectile motion. So projectile motion, that's just things that are moving um, without propulsion. So movement, that means that there's no um, like thrusters movement without propulsion. It's not a rocket propulsion. I think I spelled that right. Anyway, nothing's propelling it. Um, so you throw a rock, you throw a ball, not a rocket, uh, a gun, yes, because once the bullet leaves the gun, it's a projectile. And so projectile motion in general is going to follow kind of a parabolic, uh, it's going to do this kind of stuff. And it'll hit the ground. And so we want to be able to analyze this stuff. And we're going to do that by using vector components. So if I have a velocity at an angle, the first thing we're going to want to do is pull out the components. So I would have a velocity. Again, this is my, this is my actual velocity. So this would be a velocity in the x direction, and then I would have a velocity in the y direction. So both of these velocities will make up this total velocity. Now using right triangle trig, um, my velocity in the x direction was just going to be the velocity times cosine theta. That's because of the trig, like I did, like I just talked about. And my velocity in the y direction is going to be v uh, sine theta. So now I can actually get a value for this. So my velocity in the x direction is going to be 13 cosine 20. And my velocity in the y would be 13 sine 20. So let me calculate some values for this real quick. <coughs> Let's see, 13 times cosine 20 is 12.22 meters per second. And in the y direction, we get the x. And in the y direction, we get uh, 13 times sine 20, 4.44. Meters per second. Okay, so that's all well and good. That just comes from vectors. Now, what's important here for projectile motion is that these velocities are independent. And what's happening over here in the x doesn't affect the y, and vice versa. And so we have to think about the acceleration, if there's any acceleration. So let's just think in the x direction. So we're just thinking in x. Now I said there's no propulsion on this thing, no propulsion. So if this thing is moving in the x direction, then it's moving at a constant velocity. There's no change in the velocity. Oops, I drew that one a little longer, but it shouldn't be. Because there's no propulsion, there's nothing pushing it this way. There's no forces involved. And so it just moves along at a constant velocity. So the velocity stays the same. So it's constant velocity in the x direction. So let's put that up here. We have constant velocity in the x direction. But um, if we look at the movement in the y direction, then this thing, it's going to go up. And as it goes up, it slows down. And we already know this. It stops. It stops right here, going up, and then it starts coming back down. So it goes up, and then it comes back down. That's the same as just going up and down. It does this type of motion, and we've seen this before. This is, this is constant acceleration, and the acceleration is g. 
So we have a uh, constant acceleration in the y direction, which is equal to g. So two types of motion that we have to deal with. So we can model this um, using our kinematics. So in the x direction, if I wanted to know, you know where it was along this path, then we start with our kinematics, x naught plus v x naught t plus one half a t squared. This is our kinematic, but the x direction is constant velocity, so we don't have any of that. So my position is just going to be, well, if the initial is zero, then my position would be the velocity in the x direction times time. So notice I'm putting the little x and the initial because I'm going to do y over here, and that one's different. So this one I could use for, um, you know, to tell how far it goes uh, this way. If I want to know how high it goes or, you know, how long, anyway, if I would just want to know the y position, that's a little different. So the y direction, because that's constant acceleration, so we're going to have that acceleration piece. So in the y direction, we would get y is going to be y naught plus v y naught t plus one half a t squared. So now we got to do some stuff here. We'll assume that the initial we're just going off the ground. So we'll say y is going to be the initial velocity in the y direction times time, and then the acceleration is g, but Keep in mind, we have to take care of science. So if this is y, this is x, then g is down. So that's minus 1 half g t squared. So I made it negative because g is pointed down. And keep in mind, g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, all right, so you know these are all well and good. But basically, what I wanted you to see and then I'll carry out another, I'll try to finish this, um, is we're going to be working with kinematics twice. We work in the x and we work in the y. Because now, you see how I have this initial velocity in the x direction? That's what this thing is. Because this is my initial velocity. And my initial velocity in the y is over here. So these values would actually go in here. So this would be v cosine theta times time. And over here, you would get y is going to be v sine theta times time minus 1 half g t squared. OK, so this is the basic, this is the basic kind of setup for this thing. Um, but we can do stuff with it. So let me try to, uh, yeah, I don't want to do that. Hold on. I'm going to clear this. So you can take a screenshot or whatever. OK, so if we have a projectile, the, the basic idea is going to be, you know, we work in the x direction, and then we work in the y direction. And the thing that ties these together is going to be time. Time is the same for both of these. The time it takes to go up and down is the same time it takes to run from here to here. So we're typically going to have to solve for time. So there's some different methods when we start working with this thing, but it's, it's typically going gonna, it's gonna to come back to figuring out what this time is. Um, now, so I'm going to do an easier case, an easier example. I'm going to, let's erase this. This is one example is ground to ground. Edit. Uh, hold on a second, let me clear this. So an easy one is going to be, you know, an object shooting off of like a, a cliff or something. So we can find the time, you know, where is it going to hit, you know, or how, how, how long until it takes to hit the ground. So we want to know, you know, something like that. We want to know where it's going to hit. I'm not going to do the whole thing, though, given some initial velocity. So if I pull this over, and I'm just going to draw it like this. I can see that all of the velocity, the initial velocity, is in the x direction. So my velocity in the x is equal to v. And let's say that's, whatever, 5 meters per second. And my velocity in the y direction is equal to 0. So again, these values are going to depend on your situation. So now we can model it. So 
x is going to be x naught, which is 0, plus b x naught t. And there's no acceleration because it's constant velocity in the x direction. Over in the y, we're going to get y equals uh, y naught. Uh, the, here, let me just write it out. Vy naught t uh, plus 1 half a t squared. This is constant acceleration. Over here, the initial, so we need to know probably how high this thing is because that would be our y naught. If I'm calling the bottom zero, this would be y naught. So I don't know, let's say it's uh, 10 meters. So we would have our final position needs to be zero. Our initial would be 10. There's no initial velocity, and the acceleration is downward. So it's negative uh, 1 half g t squared. And so what we can do, if we want to know how far it's going to go, what we can do is we can figure, we can use this equation here to figure out the time it takes to hit the ground. So it's the same as if I just dropped it. Because um, the motion are independent. So if I drop one, I can figure out the time it takes to hit the ground. Once I have the time it takes to hit the ground, then I can come over here and I can tell you where it hits the ground, how far away. So it's we're going to be doing this a lot. Projectile motion, we typically want to figure out this time. Sometimes this equation is easy to solve, like this one's pretty straightforward. Um, other times it's going to get a little more complicated. So uh, just in general, three types of problems you probably want to know is a projectile like this, where you shoot it off horizontally. Um, projectiles like this, where you shoot it from the ground and it lands on the ground. And then ones where we want to shoot it off a cliff at an angle. So like that. These are the hardest ones to deal with. But um, that's just the general overview, um, just to get you ready for our in-class work.